Hello and welcome to Language Paper 1, Question 1 and Question 2 revision. So the first question we're going to focus on is Question 1 for Language Paper 1. You'll get an hour and 45 minutes in total for the paper, but Question 1 is worth four marks. You simply have to list four things. You have a copy of the question in your handout along with the extracts. You'll need those for this question. So this is the question here. So this extract is taken from a novel called The Silent Patient. It's about somebody called Alicia and somebody called Gabriel. The very first thing you should do is have a look at question one. Read question one before you do anything else. So question one says, read again the first part of the source from lines one to six. List four things about Gabriel in this part of the source. You need to highlight the keywords in the question first, so you make sure you've got a clear understanding of what you're focusing on. The question will relate to specific line numbers. Be sure to box off that part of the text. Any information outside of these line numbers will not be counted, so you'll lose marks if you look at the wrong part of the text. Remember to write in full sentences as well. If you don't do that, there's a very good chance that you'll drop marks. You can directly copy from the text as long as it makes sense, so it reads like a full sentence, but you don't have to use quotation marks. You should not be analysing anything at all. So now I'll pause the video and give yourself four minutes or so to read lines one to six and answer the question. Come back to check your ideas in a few moments. So before you check your ideas, I've got candidate A and candidate B on the board here. Candidate A has listed their responses. So Gabriel is dead. He was married for seven years. Artist and since his death, the price of photographs has increased. Gabriel is dead is absolutely fine and it will get you one mark. It's correct. It's from the correct part of the source and it's written in a full sentence. He was married for seven years would get you one mark as well. But artist wouldn't. Have a think about why. It's because it's not written in full sentence. Hopefully you got that correct. And then the final one is since his death, the price of his photographs has increased. Will that one get handed at A a mark? So the answer is yes. Now I'd like you to have a go at candidate B as well. So candidate B has listed their answers as dead. He has a distinctive style. He was an artist and he was murdered six years ago. Pause the video, have a think about how many marks you'd give him or her, and then come back. So candidate B would get no mark for dead, it's not in a full sentence. They would get one mark for having a distinctive style, because that's from the correct part of the text and it's in a full sentence. The fact that he was an artist would get you a sentence as well, but the fact that he was murdered six years ago wouldn't because it's incorrect. So use this information now to mark your own answers. Hopefully you get full marks. Now we're going to have a look at question two from section A of language paper one. So it's worth eight marks and it will ask you to analyze the use of language. So question two is on your handout and it says, look in detail at the extract from lines 25 to 30 of the source. How does the writer use language here to describe Alicia? You could include the writer's choice of words and phrases, language features and techniques or sentence forms. The very first thing you need to do is make sure you understand what the question is asking of you. So you're focusing on Alicia here. Then box off the lines. Check the focus of the question again if you haven't already. And think about what you could focus on. So you could focus on word phrases. Sometimes it's best to focus on a phrase over a single word and language features, but don't look at sentence forms. You don't need to. So just to give you some more information about the silent patient, like I said, it's about somebody called Alicia Berenson. Now, Alicia Berenson's life is seemingly perfect. A famous painter married to an in-demand fashion photographer. She lives in a grand house with big windows overlooking a park in one of London's most desirable areas. 
One evening, her husband Gabriel returns home late from a fashion shoot and Alicia shoots him five times in the face and then never speaks another word. So we're going to read the text now. You can pause the video and read it to yourself and then skip ahead or you can listen to me doing it. So the extract is taken from the opening of the novel The Silent Patient where the narrator describes the events leading to Alicia murdering her husband Gabriel. Alicia Berenson was 33 years old when she killed her husband. They'd been married for seven years. They were both artists. Alicia was a painter and Gabriel was a well-known fashion photographer. He had a distinctive style, shooting semi-starved women in strange, unflattering angles. Since his death, the price of his photographs has increased astronomically. I find his stuff rather slick and shallow, to be honest. It has none of the visceral quality of Alicia's best work. I don't know enough about art to say whether Alicia Berenson will stand the test of time as a painter. Her talent will always be overshadowed by her notoriety, so it's hard to be objective. And she might as well accuse me of being biased. All I can offer is my opinion for what it's worth. And to me, Alicia was a kind of genius. Apart from her technical skill, her paintings have an uncanny ability to grab your attention, by the throat almost, and hold it in a vice-like grip. Gabriel Berenson was murdered six years ago. He was 44 years old. He was killed on the 25th of August. It was an unusually hot summer, you may remember, with some of the highest temperatures ever recorded. The day he died was the hottest of the year. On the last day of his life, Gabriel rose early. A car collected him at 5.15am from the house he shared with Alicia in North Le northwest London on the edge of Hampstead Heath, and he was driven to his chute in Shoreditch. He spent the day photographing models on a rooftop for Vogue. Not much is known about Alicia's movements. She had an upcoming exhibition and was behind with her work. It's likely she spent the day painting in the summer house at the end of the garden, which she recently converted into a studio. In the end, Gabriel's shoot ran late and he wasn't driven home until 11pm. Half an hour later, their neighbour Barbie Hellman heard several gunshots. Barbie phoned the police and a car was dispatched from the station on Havershot Kill at 11.35pm. It arrived at the Berenson's house in just under three minutes. The door was open, and this is the bit you're focusing on for question two. The house was in pitch black darkness. None of the light switches worked. The officers made their way along the hallway into the living room. They shone torches around the room, illuminating it in intermittent beams of light. Alicia was discovered standing by the fireplace. Her white dress glowed ghost-like in the torchlight. Alicia seemed oblivious to the presence of the police. She was immobilised, frozen, a statue carved from ice with a strange, frightened look on her face, as if confronting some unseen terror. Now in a second I'm going to ask you to look again at lines 25 to 30 and pick out a few quotes that you would choose to analyse. But first of all, which of these features could you possibly discuss in question two? Pause the video and then come back in a second to check your ideas. So let's check your ideas. You could talk about personification, verbs, adjectives, nouns and adverbs, mannequin imagery, similes, amongst many other things. But it's important not to talk about the use of structure. So that could be focusing on the beginning, the middle or the end, shifting the focus, zooming in and out, thinking about a cyclical structure or thinking about mm. sentence types as well. Now I'd like you to spend two minutes thinking of which two or three quotes you would focus on. Don't forget the question is, how does the writer use language here to describe Lycia? So you could have focused on any of these quotes, anything to do with her dress glowing goat like in the torchlight, the fact that Alicia seemed oblivious to the presence of the police, that she was immobilised, frozen, a statue carved from ice, or that she had a strange frightened look on her face as if confronting some unseen terror. On your handout, you have three quotes to explode. I'd like you to take a moment now to explode the quotes using the guidelines on the handout. Remember to think about what the quotes and words and phrases literally mean, as well as what they might metaphorically suggest. Once you're done, come back and unpause the video. Now in a second, we're going to have a look at one model paragraph using one of the quotes you focused on. But I just want to go through the structure for writing your response as well. So it's T-Q-E-E-E, -E -E, T meaning terminology, Q meaning quotes, and then the E's represent the effects. And you talk about as many effects of the words or phrases as you physically possibly can until you have nothing left to say. 
Remember to use the word because to develop your ideas where possible. So your next task is to label the model paragraph that you have a copy of in your handout. As you do, you need to create a key. So you color the terminology in one color, maybe highlight or underline the quotes in another and then the effects in another and just label them as we go along. So the writer uses the simile white dress glowed ghost like in the torchlight to literally show Alicia is the central focus in the room and is commanding all attention. The fact that she's dressed in white shows Alicia literally stands out against the darkness surrounding her. Metaphorically, the adjective white suggests that Alicia is like a blank canvas, absent of all emotion and awareness of what's going on around her. The verb glowed literally suggests that Alicia is presented in a soft radiant light, though it metaphorically suggests that she is the key to bringing clarity to the mystery surrounding her husband. The use of the adverb ghost-like suggests that Alicia has an otherworldly ethereal quality about her, giving her a supernatural aura and further emphasising her mysterious nature. Since ghosts are often associated with mystery and the unknown, this raises questions about Alicia's character, what she's done and who she really is. It could also suggest that Alicia is haunted by something or that she herself is a haunting presence in the story. So like I say, as you go along, just label the key elements, so terminology, quotes and the number of effects. Pause the video and then come back to check your ideas in a moment. So on this slide, you can see that I've highlighted the terminology in yellow, the quotes in green and the effects in blue. Now, the effects and talking about the effects in as much detail as possible is the bit that's going to get you the most marks. So hopefully your model paragraph looks something like this. Now it's your turn to write the next two paragraphs of your question to response. There should be plenty of space for you to do this on your handout. Remember to use the TQEE structure on the uh, screen in front of you. And there are some sentence starters there to help you. Don't forget to be specific. So think about the effect of that word or phrase in context. Think about what it literally suggests and what it metaphorically suggests. Give yourself 10 minutes and then come back to self-assess. Finally, I'd like you to self-assess your ideas. So read your response and then in blue pen, identify any terminology used and label it with a T, label any quotes with a Q and then number the effects that you've listed and commented on using E1, E2, E3, etc. And that's it. Hopefully you found it useful. Just recapping question one and question two of language paper one.